And of course, the tricolor of La France. Bleu, blanc, rouge. Oui, oui. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my tea chunk video where I keep these videos short as possible. I am back in my hostel and I am joined with some French bronies. This is Simon. Bonsoir, uh, Simon. Bonsoir, hello. Uh, Good evening. How did you become a fan of My Little Pony? Uh, first, I discovered Dr. Wu a few years ago. Mm -hmm. and after watching Dr. Wu, I fell on Discorded Wolves Tumblr. Tumblr. Okay. Um, I like it. I like watching a few episodes of me. Now, now, I cut back on the other season during the summer break. Uh -huh. And then, when I entered the engineering school, I met Quentin. Quentin, yeah. And then, yeah, I started watching more, discussing. I learned about the fandom. Yeah. Did you, did you start from season one? or? I started back, uh, I think. It, during the when season four was, was ready, started watching. From where, sorry? I started watching during season four. All right, yeah, that, that that's why I came in about season three, season four. Right. Yeah. So uh, watch everything. I think two weeks I watched from <laughs> season one to what? <laughs> season four. Okay. So who's your favorite pony? Applejack. <laughs> I'm looking at sunset. Oh, sunset. I won't, I won't do sunset. No, 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 no. Here is another French brony called Quinton. Hello. So, so Quinton, how did you become a fan of My Little Pony? How did I become a fan of My Little Pony? Uh, I was in a, on a boat uh, in Paris. Uh, I don't live in Paris, but uh, I was visiting. Mm -hmm. And uh, a friend of mine uh, who spends his time on 4chan, told me uh, a weird thing is happening, people are becoming fans of My Little Pony. I got curious and I watched a few episodes mm -hmm. and I got hooked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, what season did you start with? Uh, I start with season one, also uh, at the time uh, season two just recently came out. Okay, so, so the end of season one yeah. you started. Okay. Uh, who's your favorite pony? My favorite pony is right here. <laughs> Just like Simon's Sunset. Pins, Sunset Shimmer. Oh boy. <laughs> but uh, I really like to cosplay uh, Button Mash. Button Mash, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Quinton. Here we go. Okay, everybody. The opening convention of the Heartswarming Con is about to go underway. So stand by and I'll bring it over to you. Oh, yes, yes, yes.
All right, welcome to Housewarming Con 2018. I'm excited to see what's going on. There's a lot of things going on actually. If you've taken a gander at your convention guides already, you might have seen there's so many things. We're going to tell you about a few of them, just in brief summary to make sure that you're not sitting here for the next three hours because there's so many things, workshops, panels, vendors, so many things you could do. And before we get into all of that, I want to make sure that you know what some of our especially nice things and people are. Because the people at Horse Army Con have worked hard to make sure that you have a very, very splendid weekend. And some of the people involved in that are going to be around in panels and autograph sessions and more. And I want to make sure we say a proper hello to them. So, they first give a nice yup to Peter Neal. Up though. Hey, yep. Thank you. And he didn't come alone. We have a second special guest, the absolutely wonderful Ellie Ray Hennessy. <laughs> You're beautiful. Say something. Oh, well, right. hey. How are you? Uh, I'm, I'm, excited. I'm excited to be here. Are you excited to be here? I'm really excited to be here. <laughs> Is your voice always sound like that? Yeah. Your character sound like that? No. How do you make your voice sound like your characters if your voice sounds like that? I get somebody else to do it. Oh. <laughs> So you will be able to see them both at the upcoming Chauvier panel. It's actually right after this, as far as I know. Yeah. So you don't need to go far, because they'll be right here. Should yep. we just stay here? <laughs> we probably. Yeah. <laughs> just make yourself at home. Because yeah, it starts right now. There's the vendor hall. Hi. 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 Rewrites, you mean, in the middle of the report? Yeah. Yeah, we do that. Sometimes we'll, they'll change things after the fact and bring you back in, and you have to do that. We can call that pickups. So, yeah, we do that pretty routinely. Like for the My Little Pony movie, for instance, I had uh, four or five sessions to do, you know, ultimately what amounted to about ten lines in four different voices because they kept changing something or adding something or whatever. And then and when you do that, maybe the first time you reported in contact with people with them, you just by yourself one at a time, like, change it up. And sometimes they just hear it, it doesn't sound right. It's like overwritten, and the writers are there for the report. Like this? You know, the you, yeah. people that are there, they'll just say, do your thing, because you know the character, so the character will just say it does that. Oh, yeah. The topic yeah. can just I brought spot, this, um, one write one it and make it sound like rare in the center. Yeah. Um, I know we've, I've done a couple of these uh, Barbie movies as well, and they actually have written uh, like four alternate lines for almost every line in the movie. So you go through it once with the A choice, and then you go back and pick up the B. Um, so it's like, it's very disjointed in terms of uh, how it works. But yeah, so we have to come up with stuff all the time. I'm gonna buy it right now. Yeah, how are you? Um, all right, thanks. Uh, my question to you is, 
when you read the script, the episode, from it, the social, and it feels not like you realize it was going to be I love it. I thought it was great. Uh, I really liked how Dave wrote that episode to make the drag choice not be a joke. Right? Like everybody just saw him in drag and went, okay, we'll see how this goes. Maybe this is what he likes now. And, I, and they just kind of accepted it. And I liked that a lot. Um, the challenge was to try and figure out, you know, I, I always love this challenge in voice work where you have to figure out what a character that you play sounds like putting a voice on, right? Because you're already putting a voice on to play the character, so now your voice is putting on a voice. So it's this meta thing that you have to do. So that was the challenge for me. It was the most fun part. But I thought it was an adorable episode. Thank you very much. I really like that. I really like that. Um, the the monologue. Like I love that that episode sort of came up to him having to say something. Which was terrific. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Uh, my name is Edwin. Hello. And I had a question. Uh, which character do you most relate to other than the character you're fortunate? Do you want to answer that? You do that. You mean? First? I do. I love that. I love that. Um, Cajun Swamp Pony. <laughs> no. That was from Geronimo Stilton. No, I had a kid. Really? Yes. Yeah. And um, I think you know I relate to every character that I play. Ultimately, and I think most of us do. It's always you're taking a part of yourself and, and, and playing it out. So, I mean, I relate to Big Macintosh a lot. I think he's got a sense of moral justice, and I have that. And, uh, but then I also relate to Sunil from Lola's Pet Shop, who is uh, you know afraid all the time and worried that nobody likes him, and I relate to that. Ah! You know. Thomas is here. It's so interesting because you love all the people that are voicing the characters, so your relationship with the voice actor is also kind of a relationship with the characters, so, you know, everybody's fabulous, so you kind of love them all. You know, Pinkie Pie for certain reasons, Fluttershy Plus Shy for certain reasons, Rarity, she's my best friend, of course I love her, but, you know. Uh, yeah. The, uh, the terrifying sunflowers. Well, why not? Good. Because, because, you know, they're terrifying for a reason. Yeah. They've been wronged. I relate. By the to sun. I relate. You know, yeah. Even the bad ones, you gotta love them too, you know. They all change. Stingent, you know, if you think about it. They've all got a story to tell. Okay, next question. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. We love everybody.